hi everybody. Uh, hi. Welcome. <laughs> welcome a few minutes late to uh, Webster Arts first virtual gallery opening. Um, we are very excited to be here today um, with uh, some very exciting guests that we don't usually get to have at our gallery opening. Um, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Webster Arts is a fabulous community arts organization. Um, our mission is to enrich our community by bringing art to life. And today we are literally bringing our art live to you uh, through Facebook. Um, this is um, a very exciting show uh, called Red. Um, every fall we do a color themed show um, based on our logo. Um, and it's really interesting to see how different artists interpret the different colors that we choose for our events. Uh, joining me today, as I said, we have some really exciting guests. Uh, we have our three um, artist winners uh, who are coming to us from different parts of the country. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves in just a little while. Uh, we also have uh, Edna Patty, uh, Patterson Petty, who was the judge for this um, exhibit. We have Jean Vogel, who is the executive director of Webster Arts. And in the background behind the logo, we have Allison, who is our um, assistant, uh, technical guru, everything Facebook Live. So thank you all for being here. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jean to get us started in uh, our event. Thanks, Jana. And again, everybody, we apologize. Thanks for sticking with us through our uh, glitchiness. Um, you know, we are all learning how to do this. And next time we promise to do it better. And the first time we did it even better than this. So we ha there is promise available for us. I do want to introduce my friend, Edna Patterson Petty, who's just a fabulous artist. Um, she's done a lot of things with us. She was one of our teaching artists when we did a refugee art experience at the International Institute a couple of years ago. Um, and she has been a juror for us in the past. And I just thought this was the perfect um, exhibit for her to, um, to jury. I didn't expect that we would have so many entries. We had 632 submissions and we could only fit 65 pieces into the virtual gallery. And I know she had a hard time doing that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Edna. Edna Patterson Petty works in a variety of media. She's nationally recognized for her art quilts and the stories they convey. She holds a BFA in art and design and an MFA in art therapy. Her art quilt, Road to Redemption, was specially created to commemorate Barack Obama's presidency and was displayed in Washington during his inauguration. Edna's work has been exhibited in venues ranging from the St. Louis Art Museum to Antioch College in Los Angeles. One of her pieces was on display for three years in the American Embassy in Pakistan, and she has an art quilt on permanent display in Senegal, West Africa. Edna has received many fellowships, um, including those from the Illinois Arts Association, excuse me, Illinois Arts Council, St. Louis Regional Arts Commission. She co-authored the book, Quilt Designs and Poetry Rhymes. I think that's still in print, isn't it, Edna? Yes, I have. Her, her work has also been featured on the cover of Ameri African American Review, the American Art Therapy Journal, and other publications. She is a lifelong East St. Louis resident and has won many awards, including a very prestigious local award called the Grand Center Visionary Award and the 2008 NAACP Arts Award. She devotes a significant amount of time mentoring young artists in the region, and she is a member of the 2009 SIEU Alumni Hall of Fame, and I am just so thrilled when I can work with her. So welcome, Edna, and tell us about this show that you juried for us? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, asking me again to uh, jury a show. Um, it was an honor because with all of the trauma that's going on today with the heaviness of, with the pandemic and just all of the hatred that's going on out there and the killing and all of that, it's such a pleasure to be able to deal with something different deal with art, something that can make us think, make us smile and make us, just give us another point of view 
to uh, to deal with. Uh, so in choosing uh, the pieces, that was a, a really difficult thing because to go through all of the art pieces and then kind of choose and and all of that. It, it's as an artist, uh, I I know which I know how it feels to be on both sides, as a judge and as an artist, and and so it's difficult because you don't you're not taking anything personal against someone and choosing the art. You're just choosing what works for you at the time and all mm -hmm. of that. So uh, it's been a joy to create the art. I mean to uh, work with the artist indirectly in creating the. Um, the exhibit. This is new for me, the, the virtual exhibit, and I guess it's probably new for a lot of people, but uh, it's, and also it's very nice to not have to have a mask on. We can <laughs> see each other's faces and, you know, and, and that's okay. We don't have to be six feet apart in order to enjoy this. So it's been, it's, it's an honor to, to be in this position. And again, I'd like to thank you for uh, allowing me to do this. Thanks, Edna. Is there anything you want to say about the pieces that you chose for um, to receive honors? I I chose them based on the feeling that I got in looking at them. But like uh, the the piece that's the foam piece, I like that just because it's intricate and and just working with foam in itself. Uh, the the one excellence, I think, I'm trying to remember, because they're, they're not faced up here, they're not here right in front of my face right at this right. moment. Yeah, they will be in a few minutes, so maybe oh, that'll okay. help. Okay, because that will help, because I don't want to get the names wrong. Sure. And everything. We're uh, going through them right now. We're seeing all the, sh all the images that are in the show, and okay. all of these images are also on, um, in, in an exhibit, a virtual exhibit on exhibit, which is E-X-B-I-H-I-B-B-I-T. And we'll have that link on Facebook um, and on our website so everybody can go through it. We didn't want to you know, open it up early because we wanted okay. everybody to see it first here, but you'll be able to actually walk through the exhibit virtually, right. um, walk up to the pieces, look at the information. So it'll be sort of like walking through an exhibit, which is really nice. Okay. Is there anything, as you see some of these pieces, is there anything you, you want to say about them? Well, actually, like I said, it, uh, it's just an honor to be able to see the pieces. And I like the theme of red because uh, red was never a, a, a favorite color of mine, but lately it has become a color that I, all of a sudden I want red clothes or a red wall or something because, you know, I guess uh, it's def a different time in my life. And so red is very uh, touching for me at this moment. So to be able to judge this particular show mm -hmm. and with this color, it's been it's been a grand thing. But I have a, I have a, a loving feeling for actually all of the pieces, which is really difficult to do. But just making the choices of the ones that I did, I could only, like I said, only could go with the way I was feeling and, and, and uh, the way they spoke to me at the time and all of that. So, do you want to say? Oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. Oh, and it still has not come up yet, the one that I wanted to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. But go ahead with your, what you were going to say. I was just going to ask if there was, if you wanted to talk a, a little bit about the, how difficult it was to make those selections because there were a lot of, a lot of pieces. Have you ever judged a show with, with over 600 pieces in it before? No, because I think the first show that I did with you, I don't think it was that many pieces. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I think it was more like 400 or something. I mean, even a show with that you juried for anyone. Right. No, this is a lot. And just in, in choosing the pieces, I, I had to go back and forth two or three times uh, to, oh. to mm -hmm. see if my feelings had changed or anything like that. And I pretty much kept coming up with the same ones. So I figured, okay, that's the sign to stay with that. You know how you go with your, that gut feeling and you don't want to keep changing things because then that starts putting the frustration in place uh, because then did I make the wrong choice or you know, that type of thing. So, um, so I'm pretty happy with, with what has been chosen 
and everything. And I just hope that uh, the people are proud of, of their work, the ones that have been chosen to be in the exhibit and all of that. And a virtual show for me is really new. It's, it's really yeah. new because you know how you like to walk up to a piece, look at it and just stare at it and that type of thing. And so working with Zoom is really new to me because you had asked earlier uh, some time ago about would I ever be able to teach a workshop using Zoom? Right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> because I, I, I'm a touchy feely kind of person and I like to walk around and, and, and observe things that way. And you not you don't have that um, choice with it being virtual. So this is something I have to really get used to. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, others as well, but for me, it's just kind of like way out of my league. And I'm trying to feel better because this is my third time, not with you, but my third time having to do something with Zoom this year. So it's it's a little better than it was the very first time. <laughs> that I, uh, well, I, we're glad you joined us. We're really glad right, you joined yeah, us. So. We're going to um, announce the winners and introduce the winners. And if we could start, Allison, with Burden. That's why Vet Cummings aren't. Okay, this is the piece that really I had a, a strong feeling toward because of, of her waiting in the water, trying to get to wherever she's going, the baby on her back. So it, it, it uh, gave me that feeling of, you know, a woman's work is never done. You know, you got to take care of the children. You got to take care of the home and just all that. And then you have to keep your worries to yourself so you don't upset everyone involved. And so it touched me in that respect. Well, I bet you, you um, are being awarded the Award of Excellence. So congratulations. <laughs> Would you like to talk about this work? Thank you, Edna. And welcome. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, Edna hits a lot of the things that I'm, I'm hoping are coming across in the work. And so, you know, for me, this is a lot about um, those burdens that we carry and what we're, what we're willing to share and what's um, those ideas of, of transgenerational burden that, that can be passed on, even if you're not intending your own traumas and things to happen to, um, to, to be kind of put onto your children unintentionally as well. And so um, I also like to hit on themes of the way that our histories can scar us physically and they leave a mark. And so, you know, here we see kind of the, the room as that, that kind of physical body, that there's stains on the walls that are part yeah. of that history, yeah. that the way the, um, the wallpaper is, is worn, it's tearing apart, those layers of ourselves, what we're willing to reveal, those types of things are all part of my work. And, um, and what we hide, you know, there's a lot hidden behind that wallpaper that hasn't worn away. And so I think Edna was kind of hitting on that as well. Um, this was inspired by, um, I live on coastal Carolina, about 15 miles from the ocean. And um, over the last couple of years, we've had a couple of major hurricanes. And so I've had friends whose houses have been flooded, um, four feet of water in their house. And we have um, the Blackwater rivers here. So the um, cypress trees stain the rivers. And so when they, that water gets into your house, it leaves this mark. And so this is really inspired by these marks left on the walls from just the rivers receding. Um, and it shows that passage of time, how high the waters got. And as they went down a little, a little bit more, a little bit more. And I think we all have those types of marks on us, whether visibly or internally, um, that show that passage of time. And you know, part of it's a healing process, part of it's acceptance um, and, and what we reveal. So I, I think it's a wonderful awesome. piece. It, it really, I, I found it very compelling too. And I would, the couple of things I started focusing on was the pattern of the wallpaper. And then I pulled back and I realized, oh my gosh, we've got high water marks. We've yeah. got uh, stains on her feet. We've got stains on her hands mm -hmm. because clearly she's been working in this water so that she's, I mean, she's been working through all of the disasters in her life and she's clearly very, very weary. Exactly. Exactly. So, it's yeah. a wonderful piece. Congratulations. And you show, you show that in her face, you know, because her eye looks almost black yeah. and that type of thing. And so I could really identify with that feeling because I know 
uh, the things that I've had to go through and that I had to hide from my children. And then when you get someplace by yourself, you can let go for a minute and then you have to gather yourself back. So it really did touch me. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. And I would um, invite anyone on Facebook Live, if you have any questions, we can't take them through Zoom, but we can certainly watch for them in the, um, in the comment section and we can address them at the end. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, Allison, could we have Kansas City, please, by Margaret Sands Goldstein. Margaret, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to tell us about this piece? Um. I take lots of pictures of doors and windows and think about the, the entry and exit and ins and outs and um, viewpoints. And um, I'm an art therapist and an art therapy educator and an artist. So all that kind of comes together and um, there's the first layer that's there of the Mondrian door that caught my attention. And then the more I looked, the more there were all the rectangles and all the squares and all the layers of that. And um, it's kind of a wistful thing now because it's a store and it's an art store and you can see little um, flyers and posters for Thing, art things that are happening in the big open word. And it's a view from the before times when things were open and we could go in and out and we could easily do many things that are much more difficult now. So it's a happy moment from the past <laughs> and maybe a hope for the future as well. I like the way that in looking at the door you tend to not focus so much on the things that are around the door, like the two rectangles at the top with the, I guess, air conditioning units or something. Mm -hmm. and, and then the little window in the side, you look at it, but then all of a sudden your eye just goes right back to the door, at least for me, you know? And so, so I felt in, very intrigued with that. And then the, 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 the colorful way that it is and then, like you're saying, the rectangles and the squares in juxtaposed with the uh, the rectangle of the bricks and all of that. So I like it, yes. Thank you. And I should say that Margaret joins us from Detroit. Thank you. I should have said that Yvette joins us from South Carolina. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and this is also an award of excellence winner. And our best of show, a mass. Mm. is by Marjorie Amdor, who joins us from Philadelphia. Do I remember that right? And, and you said you bought it for 20000 No, <laughs> I did not say I bought it for 20000 <laughs> <laughs> I work for a nonprofit organization, small, <laughs> small arts administrator. <laughs> uh, but welcome from Philadelphia. And could you tell us about your work on Mass Number 16? Yes. And thank you. And it was um, an honor and a uh, great delight to find out uh, that and uh, that you um, selected this uh, piece. Um, this actually is owned by the U.S. Embassy in uh, Suriname. The in the interesting thing I don't I think I wrote foam, but yes. what this piece is made out of is cosmetic sponges. Oh, okay. So I, I used to write the cosmetic sponges um, because <laughs> it, the issue of gender, right? And there's so, it's subversive in so many ways. Um, so in a certain respect, there's an audience where I write, um, I use cosmetic sponges and then there's another audience that um, I started to just say foam. Um, but for me, these pieces are thousands and thousands of purchased cosmetic sponges not used that I then turn into formations that I then glue on canvas. Um, so it's very uh, labor intensive 
obsessive work. And unlike the other two artists, I say that my, this body of work, uh, I call them like felt narratives. Um, so I don't have a more illustrative specific uh, situation, but those situations are underneath all of the cosmetic sponges you see on the surface. So in a certain respect, it's soft, but it's also a shell um, that carries all the stories that the other two already, uh, artists talked about behind it. Um, I think also my work is very much about kind of trying to slow down time, uh, and, you know, in this very like fast paced, fast paced world. So that actually the gluing, um, I usually have a small team of people that I work with. And so as we're working, uh, we share stories and um, those stories also are embedded into the piece and they're actually a great joy of the way I work. I wouldn't call myself an art and social practice artist, but in a certain respect for, I'm afraid to say this, but 30 years, um, I've had students work with me in my studio on the work. And the larger the pieces get, they silence the room that they're in. So because of their phone. So there's all this activity and making and talking and sharing and oh my God, this and da da. And then when it gets put up on the wall, uh, there's a calm. And also when you walk by, there's this kind of just, um, yes, the silencing of the sound. So, and relative to red, when I was an undergraduate, uh, I had, there was only one woman professor, you know, my professors were all men. And I did a piece um, that I used the color pink. And she said, oh, no, no, you cannot use pink. That's just a, a weak color. You should use red. Um, and basically, a lot of my work is very, very much, this is a long time ago, is very, uh, I, I am a pink person. Mm -hmm. And my work was going more towards monochrome when um, I, I didn't have an intention to create a red piece. And the U.S. Embassy called and said that they wanted a piece in red. And, <laughs> that was good. You know, and I, um, you know, I have never in my life, I don't make work to go above a couch, let's see, to say. But when the U.S. Embassy called, it's like, you know what? I think I can make a red piece. Uh -huh. um, so having that opportunity and taking that opportunity really changed the nature of the work and the meaning of the work. Because so there's just the color red, like you said, is provocative in itself. So you never know where these opportunities are gonna come from, but it wasn't like I was out to create a red piece initially. And from that, there's like a sense of royalty or um, just a boldness that probably would not have been in the work had that opportunity not have um, come my way. So again, I would like to know uh, your dyeing process. Did you do did you do all the reds at one time in a bat, or did you paint it after it was put together? Do you really want to know? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> so these are made flat. They're all on canvas, and it's okay. made in sections because it's so large. Okay. So I take the sponges and they're white and they're glued on okay right? and i go back and forth between um when they're laying on a table and then they take them to the wall and believe it or not that i i don't color them in vats it's okay. painstaking i i work with inks and um dyes and i put them on with brushes and the uh, this is covered with pastel pigment so I don't know if you if you know of the pastels. They're called pan pastels. They're almost like little makeup. You know, the um, pigment is in a circular okay. kind of cake form. Yes. Yeah. So I literally take a sponge onto the pigment and then put it onto the sponge that's on the piece. So the sponge is dressing the piece. It's ridiculous. It's it's totally ridiculous. But that's how the pieces are made. Oh, okay, okay. And then when they hang flat, they're very architectural. That's really, for me, mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of traveling. 
So both, um, uh, I say my favorite places are both Iceland and New York City. And people are like, what? Mm -hmm. And if you think about them, they're both like very, very busy places, right? It's just a diff, it's nature and it's busyness. And then like New York City is urban and the landscape or buildings. So this piece, if you saw it hanging, it would feel very much like a, looking down on a cityscape. But okay. when I bunch it up, it becomes mother nature inherit, inherit mm -hmm. whatever, enters into the uh, equation. <laughs> Well, I, I'm so glad we were able to have this piece in the show because obviously at eight by 10 feet, yeah, I wouldn't that's have something to. we would have been able to probably get. You probably would not have been able to ship it to us. Right. And you so. wouldn't have been able to hang it. That's, see, that's the other thing is because it's organic. I have to come and mm -hmm. duke it out with the piece. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we would appreciate that because we have some challenging hanging situations in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a beautiful piece and I also want to um can, I, if I if you don't mind I'm going to comment on the photography of it because normally when we're photographing our artwork we don't want any shadows at all but the art had to have tons of shadows in here so that we could see the depth of the piece and I, I think the, the it's beautifully photographed thank you thank you it took because we really can see all of the nooks and crannies mm -hmm. in this piece and you'll be able to walk right up to it in the gallery. So that'll <laughs> zoom in and zoom out. You can zoom in and zoom out. Yeah. Well, I, uh, Allison, do we have any questions from Facebook Live audience? Yeah. So Audrey Chris Berkowitz, who had a piece in the show, was curious about how many pieces were uh, included that were photography and how many are 3D. Um, I did. Uh, post a link to the online gallery. So it's on our website, uh, webster-arts.org backslash red, and you can see the full show, all the pieces together. But um, I think that this is a good time to talk about how we handled 3D work in the show. And I was able to roughly count about nine pieces that were photography in the show. And I think we had four 3D pieces? Yeah. Four or five sculpture works. And the sculpture works um, do present a challenge with us this time because it's a virtual show and the exhibit software we're using places the object flat on the wall. So what we did is ask the artists who, who had 3D work and we didn't, we didn't ask Edna, we didn't tell Edna anything about this. So we didn't want to discourage her from bringing in a piece <laughs> or encourage her from bringing in a piece. We just said, this is the work and please choose the best that you, that you would like to see in the show. Um, so we did ask all the artists who were accepted who had 3D pieces to produce a video that would walk around their piece so you could see it. And that is in the exhibit um, link. But I don't think we had a lot of, we haven't been getting a lot of photography submissions, I don't think. Yeah, that looks like that's the only question so far, but last chance. <laughs> Any last words from that Marjorie or Margaret or Edna? No, not I'd like to know with Yvette, like the, the, um, the people in the painting, where they are looking. Who they are? They looking at a something, a someone. Well, it's interesting. Like in in my body of work, I kind of go back and forth where they are just confronting you as the viewer. Okay. Um, to kind of bring you in, or you're totally not engaged. You know, it's I do either or, and so that one, to me, that almost kind of feels like they've been caught. You know, the way yeah. that she's looking back and looking at you. And you've caught her at a moment where she maybe didn't want you to know things were quite so bad type of yeah. thing. Kind of how I look at that. Yeah. Do you know the story, the yellow wallpaper? I do very much. Yes. And I've been, <laughs> I've been toying with a way to do some sort of performance piece with that, that is not like putting on a play. And so it's, it, you know, it's been in my mind for a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody for being part of the, our first virtual fair, our first virtual exhibit um, today. We, I think we've got over 40 people on Facebook Live watching with us. So we 
welcome you and we hope that this has been um, an enlightening, enlightening and enjoyable 30 minutes or so and that you'll get a chance to look at the exhibit pretty carefully. Um, Jana, any final words? Um, I just want to uh, thank our artists, um, our uh, judge, um, our staff, or uh, Jean and, and Allison for the time that you took to, to put all this together from a technical standpoint. I know that that's new for us. Um, and I thank all of the people who are watching us today live, and I hope you go in to see the exhibit. Um, maybe some of you would not have the opportunity to come to our exhibit in person if we had one. Uh, so hopefully this is an opportunity for you to see some interesting art. Um, and I hope you enjoy. And this show will be up through October 31st on in the exhibit link. And we will have another show in November and the middle of December. And we'll have another virtual exhibit opening in November and that show is relationships. So until then, thank you everybody and enjoy the art. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Here we are gonna. So Jean, you can stop the live. I can't sign up.